مرحبا لورا في البروغرام مالتيز داون اندا وفي التقسيم اللي مسر نتكلم مع الشيف شيرين سبيتيري اللي عادة كم ببليكات لو الكتب تاعها تا ريتشيتي تا حلو تراديسيونالي مالتي I was just a baby when we came so I was eight months old so my memories aren't great of course I've got a lot of black and white photos that I can look back on um, so of course like every European family they came here for a better life and um, My first travels to Malta was at the age of 16, was my first return. And uh, I think I've mentioned before, I was so highly impressed with the place, uh, the feeling, the culture, the hospitality, the people, that I think it was a love affair right from the start. And I, I love it so much to this day. So why did you go back to Malta to study and work there as well? Thank you, great question. Uh, my parents uh, always wanted to go back to retire one day, which they did. Um, so long time in the planning, that was in the year of 1990. Um, and literally we'd sold our house, we sold the family business. Mum died a month before, which was um, traumatic and obviously out of the blue. Uh, but we, we sold it on and we went anyway. Uh, but prior to that um, leaving, I was actually offered an apprenticeship here in Australia to be a qualified chef. And I actually didn't even apply for it. The, uh, the UK head chef and the German sous chef approached me because I was always in the pastry kitchen. And they, they knew my enthusiasm and passion for quality. And five-star hotels had that quality of produce. Um, so I was really, not only flattered, but really, really, really happy. And I said, Dad, look, I understand that you want me to come with you and I'm your only girl, but it's on the proviso that I can actually do my studies there and find out how to be qualified there, which is what I did. I immediately got accepted into RTS there. I did exceptionally well. Uh, they did try to convince me to go into management, which was nice what I said thank you very much but it's actually not my thing I'm actually passionate about cooking and wanting to be a chef so once being qualified uh, a certain percentage of, of students are allowed to go uh, to London and overseas which is what I did I worked with the Barclay group of companies came back worked with Malta Hilton for a few years transferred back to Melbourne Melton Hilton worked at the Grand Hyatt so I've had a bit of experience but I have to say within all of that time which is quite vast I didn't actually see a lot of Maltese recipes. <laughs> so it's taken me many decades to accumulate quality recipes that work. Because for me, what this means is a piece of my childhood. Uh, it's, it's literally like having mum in the kitchen every time. And it, that's priceless for me. And because it's taken me so long, Um, I genuinely wanted to share that with other people because I know it's important. It is. Speaking of your childhood, yes. and as we know, the kitchen is the soul of the Maltese family, yes. really. Um, going back to your memories of your time in the kitchen with your mum, is that what um, brought um, forward this passion for Maltese sweets and pastries? I'm very sure that uh, it was. Mm -hmm. She was a very, very passionate cook. She was a great cook, but she was a natural. Look, she wasn't actually huge on sweets. I'm, I'm the greater sweet tooth, and that's why I developed a, a greater, not only repertoire, but I think I'm a bit better. Her repertoire was mains, but she was great. And you know, when you're young, you don't really fully realize what's going on, but she was such a mentor. She was such an inspiration. And you know, the Maltese are such giving people, And I really miss them, I really miss them. So this is my tribute to them and also wanting to share and connect to my culture and my people. And I'm actually making an effort to go out into the community to meet people directly because this is what it's about. Before, it before we get to that, because I know you do quite a bit of um, cooking demonstrate, baking demonstrations. Yes. Tell us more about the book. I've noticed that it's not just recipes. There are recipes, but you've got, let's say it's a cultural experience because it's a Maltese cultural experience. It's food and ambience. Thank you. Tell us more about the photos and the recipes in this book. Um, well, living so far away from Malta because it's on the other side of the world, um, I love it and I miss it. 
and I wanted that experience of Malta to be within the book because um, it makes me happy. I literally, uh, I take photos obviously every time I go because I do travel there quite frequently. But anything that I own that's of Malta is really precious to me and that's not an exaggeration, it is. And I wanted that to incorporate that within the book and also present Malta in a way that I felt proud, but also to reflect its intrinsic mood. There's nothing pretentious, it's basic streetscape, but real life in Malta. And that's what I wanted to capture within the book, the, the feeling of Malta. What about the recipes? Are they your mum's recipes or are they yours? <laughs> well, I'd actually, I the only recipe of mum's literally that I've used is her rugiata because she made that every summer. She'd make bottles and bottles of like it. Like a good Maltese mum. <laughs> which is really nice. I loved it. Uh, but a lot of the recipes that uh, particularly mum had in her repertoire, which I've still got, have actually refined along the years. Um, because what I wanted to achieve was when I go to Malta, I can't help it. The things I really buy are the sweets. They're my staples, the art to Larcel, the art to George Lean, and so on and so forth. And I wanted people to actually acquire that standard within the recipes that I've actually given them because that's what I wanted for me. So once I achieved that for me, I thought, I think it's only fair to share this because it's taken me such a long, long time to acquire this body of work. And what's your favourite multi sweet? <gasps> Look, I'm probably going to say at the very top of the list is the Maltese souffle gâteau. It's really a continental cake, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But I've got a lighter custard, so the vanilla custard, the chocolate custard, it's light. It's not that indulgent, I think. <laughs> now, um, you were saying before, you do cooking, baking demonstrations as well. Whereabouts do you have these demonstrations? So I'm obviously going where the demographic is. So uh, in the libraries that have a very high... Uh, percentage and population of Maltese because it's about meeting the audience. So I've gone from Melton, Caroline Springs, uh, Werribee Plaza, Laylaw, um, Altona. So I'm, I'm doing a bit of groundwork just literally to meet people because that's part of the joy. And I'm actually making a few friends along the way. And I invite people all the time. It's really not about the book. It's about sharing experiences. It's about sharing life because I feel that we're quite isolated being away from Malta so far away. It's really hard. Um, so it's just about connecting with people and, and food is a big part of our culture. Now, where can the book be found? The book can That's be found. That's the most found. important thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It can be found at reading stores. You can buy it on my website.